Hi, my name is Heather Smith. I'm from Western Reserve Public Media in Kent. And today I would like to show you one of my favorite tools in the world called Thrively. The Thrively is a great way to get to know your students in about 30 minutes. So what they will do is you would create a class. Um, you can have them join with Google Classroom or give them a join code. It's pretty simple to get it set up. And they would go in and take an 80 question assessment. And this assessment is built for kids. It's not watered down. It will ask them um, so many different things, like how would you react when somebody cuts in front of you in the lunch line, or maybe having to put pictures in order, or having you do an activity where you're patting your head and rubbing your belly and kicking your foot and asking how difficult that was. It's pretty interactive. If your students can't read yet, it can also read the questions to them. When you're done with Thrively, it's a wonderful dashboard that it gives you and it tells you about each individual student and your class as a whole. So you can view your class and see the strengths of your overall class, what students are in that group. You can see the interests of your class, what kids are interested in the same things, and the career pathways that your students are interested in. I'm going to show you all about that right now. Let's go over. Here we are on the Thrively dashboard. You're on your home screen. This is where you will see everything. You'll have access to get your student login information. You can go to your class here. You can move them to different classes. You can review your playlists. Um, playlists are the videos and the lessons that you want them to interact with. Um, your library is gonna have different things the students have interacted with things you'll put together. So let's get started. Let's start with insights. This is one of my favorite things you'll do after you have the students take the assessment. You can click on this class snapshot. And in here you will see a list of all of your students. You can do all classes or you can go to your individual class and look at just them. So you'll see your students are here. If they have this little ribbon and everything is filled in, it means they have completed their assessment. And you can see the skills there, they have their top five character skills, the things they're interested in, and maybe their future careers that they're interested in. It's a nice way to see just an overview of all your students. So let's go to insights again and go to class interest breakdown. The strength interest breakdown is pretty awesome. So you're first going to see the strengths. So in this class, flexibility is the top strength. I can go down, I can see who has compassion. If I click on any of these, it's going to show me all the students that have that skill. So I like this because if I were to do group work, I would probably split up my verbal kids, my social kids, my uh, creative kids, my leaders, I would split them into a bunch of different groups. So each group has artsy people, has a leader, has talkative people, has uh, creative thinking. I would just try to make a, 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 a group with a lot of different uh, diversity in it. So the next thing you can look at is what your kids are interested in. So if you wanna do any clubs or do fun activities with your kids, it's great to know what they're into. So you're not um, maybe starting a foreign language group when it doesn't seem very many kids in your class are interested in that. Instead, I'd look at creative arts or maybe dance. And when I click on those, it goes into more detail and it says out of the creative arts, drawing is the favorite. And I can look and I can see who likes to draw. I can make a group out of that. How easy is that? All right. And then the last thing I will see is the pathways. And the pathways are the careers that my students are interested in. So I would use this in two different ways. One, as a community, who in, is represented in our community? How many artists do we have in our community? How many dentists? How many professional athletes? How many lawyers? Do we need that many in our area? Will they make decent money if there's that many in our small community. That's one way. Another way is I would lump them together and so I have people that want to be a chef or a DJ and I can click on that and I'm going to have those kids work together and come up maybe with a company or a business and and create that kind of stuff like their company logo and you know just kind of a fun fun activity like that. 
Okay, so those are the insights. You can also go down to the patient report and that will tell you uh, what the students have interacted with on here. So if I scroll down, I can see Ashley Carter has interacted with it a lot. She has 19 highlights, 50 journal entries. So you can see how you can look use that. Okay, so courses. Courses are lessons put together, so like a unit. Let's think of it like that. And there are free and paid courses, but I am in a, a demo here so I can have access to everything. Um, once this loads up, I can select categories. So I could do college and career readiness, critical thinking, growth mindset, leadership, mindfulness, social emotional learning, STEAM, STEM, strengths, all sorts of things. I can also look at it by grade level. So you're gonna have like your high school, middle school, primary grades that you can choose from. All right, so if I go into one of these, let's see. My computer is going all slow. Let's go to become a great public speaker. You can see right here, this is a four hour course. So if I was interested in it, I wouldn't expect them to get done with it one day. I'd break it up into individual lessons. So courses will tell you the age range, the overview, skills, how long it will last, your playlists, um, how many have started it, completed it, journal entries, you can see all that right away. You'll, you'll see directions, you'll see an exercise, maybe a video to watch, and then a reflection that the students would do. And the students can type it, they can record it, or voice record, and then they'll click next lesson, and that will take them to the next one. And they'll keep going until they're done. Um, of course, they can be broke up over time. So let's go back to the home screen. All right, so we just looked at the courses, we did the insights, and now I'm gonna show you the pathways. So pathways are gonna be all the careers that your students can explore. They're in alphabetical order. Um, you could use this with little kids, you know, discuss different paths, like what career will we learn about this week? And you could show videos and, and interact with it that way. Or the students that are interested in this can come in and find a little bit more out about their career. So if you notice, they're in alphabetical order. Okay, so I'm just gonna pick one. I'm gonna hit career counseling. Let's see what is involved with career counseling. It's going to tell me my interests, I have to be social. My median salary is about 54,000 a year. My education required is a master's degree, post-master's certificate. I can click on more and I can find out even more. I can get a description, some knowledge of what I need to know, uh, skills, work activities, and work style. It's like pretty in depth there. And then I could go and I could watch videos on a sum summary of career counseling. I can watch videos of what that is. I can also look at some suggested activities that, that might be good to look at. So that's pathways. Let's go back home. Sparks, these are gonna be activities that are online that the students could go and they could play with. And you could add these um, to their playlists. You can add new Sparks in here as well. All right, so you'll notice there are different, they're separated by the content. So you have STEM activities, learn to code activities, you have history, um, news feed, different things. Lessons. Let's look at the lessons. Lessons are like courses except they're just individual lessons. So they will normally take about 20 to 30 minutes to do each one. Again, you can go into the categories, same kind of categories. You're going to mindfulness, problem solving, self-esteem, social emotional learning, empathy, um, you can do any of them. So we'll look in here, we have four-year colleges, we have stop bullying, applying past knowledge to new situations. Let's check out that. It also tells me it's a 20-minute lesson. 
so I have an idea. So if this looks like something you'd want to do today with your class, it's for grades nine, ages 9 to 12, you would just add it to your playlist. You can review it, see what it's about. Reflect. This one has three exercises and I am finished. And now the, the teacher will be able to see on her dashboard what the students wrote for each of their reflections to each of the exercises. And you just click add to playlist to add those on. Um, when you want to see the journals, you can look right here in the journals or it'll tell you um, on your home page your recent journals that were interacted with. So you can come in here, you can see what they said, you can star it, or you can even leave a comment back to them. All right, let's go into projects. What I like about projects is these are like genius hour type activities that you can do. And there's already a lot made. So if you want to create a new one, you can go here and create a brand new one, or you can browse existing projects right here. And when you come on here, you can go and you can see there's a bunch of different ones that are already made. So I'm going to go up here, I'm going to pick the gelato case study. This is for ages 12 to 18. And here's what I know about it. So in, I think like the last part of the year, the class goes and they do this gelato case study, um, the last part of the school year. And they are, the students come up with a flavor and name for a new gelato. So that they do the market research, and all the steps, and they are listed in here. They are just not showing up for some reason. Oh wait, here we go. It helps if I hit start project. All right, so when you're in here, you can see the uh, what's going on. They can add to post ideas, images, and audio video to the stream, okay? So this is going to be seen by the, the team that is assigned to this project. But you can come in here. You can see there's 19 activities. You can edit any of them. If you want to edit anything, you can make it say something else. You just hit save when you're done. You link it in. You can add new ones if you're seeing that there's an activity that you would like to add into the project already made, you can add that in very easily. If you click on your team, you have right now team one, but you can create another team and you can add members to this team by clicking the plus button. Your students will come up and you can click on them. And then for artifacts, it just tells you that they're documents and media from each team's project. So they can upload those kinds of things there. And that is a great, um, these are great for Genius Hour Genius Hour projects and everything. All right, let's go back home. The last part that I would like to show you are the journals. So you click on journals. What's really cool about Thrively is that you can add journals to it. So if you want them to have like a gratitude journal or a science journal, you can create a new journal. Um, but when you're in here, you can select all the journals. You can do specific topics. You could do any of these um, that show up in your, in your list and you could go to that journal and just look at that or do it by group. All right, and so you have a whole list of all the classes, um, what they have. You can view the article if you want a refresher on what they're reflecting on, a little bit more detail. And then when you create a new journal, 
when you create a new journal, you just name it here. You can type in your writing prompt and you can add it to the playlist. And you could also check that all the kids can see each other's journals. And you can also upload an image from your computer when you do that. All right, so though this is the dashboard. If I want to, how do I use this with my students? I can view the guide here. It's like Thrively has thought of everything, so they put it all in here. What's nice about this is if you're very new to Thrively and you're wanting to dig in deeper, it explains everything for you. So this will tell you reflection plus student voice, what that means. Students reflect on their learning through journals in Thrively. Um, helps build self-awareness, critical thinking, and problem solving, all the very important things that we want in our classrooms. Um, what the students learn, so this will go on and show you what students have learned through re the reflective practices, um, how to roll this out with your students. So it'll just kind of help you get this all started with, with all your kids. It's a nice, a nice piece there. So I'm going to click back over on Thrively. All right, so another piece, if you are getting started, this help tab is really helpful. So you can go, when you're getting started, you can do a Thrively overview. You can do a featured tour. They have videos that you can watch in here. This will just tell you a little bit about Thrively, more so than what I have done. Um, getting started playlist, the implementation guide. It has teacher guides. So if you wanted to use the digital portfolio, the journals, career exploration, sparks, or projects, you can know more there. You can look at the Thrively journal and they have K3 Journey. This is a newer thing. It used to just be third grade and up, so they've been working on it for the smaller kids, so that's really awesome. So this is going to help develop the whole child. This is the primary elementary, and this will help you get started with your students aged four to eight. So they'll help develop social and emotional awareness, build an innovation mindset, Inspire young leaders, strengthen academic skills, embrace student wellness. And you only do this for about 30 minutes a day. And it's really, I think, worth it. So your strength guide, that's going to give you all um, a breakdown on how the strength guide works. Who designed it, the, the people that did all that. Um, it's going to explain to you a little bit of what you will see. That is what we did not see yet. We did not go into the um, portfolio, and I will just show you that here. So you can go down here. You can read a little bit more about what it is, and then it has all the strengths listed down here and what that means. So that's really nice uh, if you want more in-depth explanations. All right, so the last thing I'm going to show you is the portfolios, which is just a great feature because it has students setting their own goals what they want to accomplish and then it has them develop a way to accomplish those goals so you can create a statement here about who you are what you're interested in your aspirations you can add a media a video here or a picture to make it stand out you will scroll down you can see your assessments of what you've done your multiple intelligence assessment how it's a mind profile and then you'll have your goals so be more empathetic and they have one highlight so if i click on here you're going to see the action plan so you have your goal up here and you have your action plan down here in the highlights so the highlights are the things that you did to help get to your goal Let me go back. Let's go back some more. So that's pretty much the portfolio is great for keeping uh, goals and actions to achieving the goals in there. So that is an overview of Thrively. If you have any questions, please um, get a hold of me, email me, and I will help you out in any way that I can. Thank you.